shoot to the corner of the room. It adds leading lines that point toward your subject, and it adds depth to your shot. Don't obsess about the rule of thirds. It's more like the suggestion of thirds. Turn off the guidelines and trust your eyes. If you're working with a high contrast scene, like shooting outside on a sunny day, consider using a compressed picture profile like Log to protect the shadows and highlights so you can expand them back later without losing detail in the extremes. But don't bother shooting in Log all the time. If you're shooting in reasonable lighting conditions, like this right now, your default picture profile will probably work perfectly well and be easier to color grade later. Try moving your camera during the shot to increase the sense of depth and dimensionality using parallax. If you want the background to look closer or larger to the subject, shoot from farther away and zoom in on the subject. Consider using an occasional wide establishing shot to give your audience a sense of place and context, even if the majority of your footage is focused on a specific subject. Shoot with two cameras, even if one of them is just your phone, so you have more options for cutting and editing later. Use reverse shots. If the subject is looking at something, show a point of view shot of what they're looking at so the viewer doesn't feel like they're missing something. If you're going to chop something off, like feet or hands or a head, Chop off a lot of it. If you only chop a little, it looks weird. Don't just shoot from eye level. Explore different angles. Don't shoot in 60 or 120 frames a second all the time just because you might want some slow motion footage because it makes your regular footage really jerky and choppy. When you want slow motion, shoot for slow motion. If you want real-time footage, shoot for real-time footage. Shoot a little wider than you think you'll need. Shoot a little longer than you think you'll need. Shoot, shoot multiple, multiple takes, takes just because, because sometimes, sometimes you don't have the, have the shot, shot even though you were sure you have the shot. Take a bunch of additional shots before or after you get your primary footage. Wide shots, detail shots, action shots, establishing shots, portraits of your subjects, different angles. Give yourself some editing options. If you don't have a gimbal handy, try stabilizing your footage by putting a tripod on your shoulders. If you're talking to the camera, pause for a moment before you start speaking and after you stop. This makes it way easier to edit than if you're moving your head or blinking at the end where you need to cut. If you're shooting a subject with glasses, move your lights up and to the side so they don't reflect as much. However, if you're shooting a subject without glasses, consider putting a light at an angle where the camera will catch the reflection of it in their eyes, because you do want those reflections. Leave room in the shot for the direction people are looking so it doesn't look like they're staring at the edge of the screen. Record audio in two different ways in case one of them doesn't work, because inevitably that'll happen. Add sound effects during post-production that weren't picked up in your main audio to convey more of a multi-sensory experience and a feeling of being there. Use JNL cuts to make smoother audio transitions between clips. If you're using a voice over music, use your equalizer to create a frequency trench in the music so your voice can sit inside it and be heard clearly. Raise the stakes. Whatever your scene is about, make sure the viewer knows why it's so important so they stick around to find out what happens. While you're at it, add a ticking clock, some kind of deadline or inescapable event that creates anticipation and time pressure on the subject of your video. Try color grading by hand instead of using a LUT. This way you'll know exactly what you're doing to the footage, and it'll probably actually look better because the changes you're making are specific to your exact footage. If you want your shot to be dark and moody, you don't have to shoot it dark. Shoot it with regular exposure to make sure you're capturing as much image data as possible and then push it down in post-production to get the look that you want. Plan your videos in advance so you can work on multiple projects at a time. This lets you batch related shots together so you can shoot more efficiently. Create a shot list along with your script so you've already pre-visualized and created a checklist of the shots you're going to need. Keep your camera bag ready to go because you never know when you're going to have to grab it and run. Fresh batteries, empty cards, and all your gear already loaded up. And put a snack in your camera bag because you just never know what's going to happen.